Brigador24. Thank you for becoming a patron. You are what keeps the dream alive. Alright, let's get into it. Papa squat next to Uncle Durag because it's story time. What's up everybody, Duray back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about a game that I've never really talked about on the channel, but I have gotten a lot of references from comments to the game before, particularly when I talk about 83 or After Conflict, two games where their settings take place in the Cold War era. Like anytime that I would drop a video about one of those two games, there's always like somebody in the comments section that'll say something about Escalation 1985. Like that's the only time I've ever heard about this game is just through my comment section and i'm not entirely sure why i know that a lot of bigger youtubers have covered the game prior to my knowledge of it but all of those videos have been dated back at around 2018 which kind of leads me to believe that the game hasn't really seen that many updates i mean again i haven't followed the game so i wouldn't know for sure if you're someone that's had prior knowledge of this game then let me know how have the updates really been because now we're going to be getting into the reason why i'm actually making this video it seems as if the game is dead what was going to be a short video of me just telling you that this recommended game was dead is now turning into a gigantic rabbit hole every time that I look into it. Oh. My favorite. Earlier today, a subscriber came to me saying that I should talk about this game because it just kind of went off the radar. For those of you that don't know what Escalation 1985 is, it is a game that was to be set in the Cold War, made by Icebreaker Interactive. Escalation 1985 is an authentic multiplayer first person shooter depicting what it would have been like for combat soldiers if the Cold War had gone hot in 1985. The game is centered around mechanized infantry tanks transporting and spawning players on the battlefield. The players are divided into two teams of 50 and further split into squads that are led by squad leaders. Tanks are organized into platoons led by a tank platoon commander with each tank being crewed by a tank commander, driver, and gunner. So it sounds a lot like a squad type of game. And according to my research, it seems as if at one point it did use OWI core or it wasn't called OWI core back then. This was during the time when it was a mod and both Escalation and Postscriptum were being conceived at the time but apparently they switched over to developing their own code base because the developers said it was quote a bad deal the deal that both postscriptum and escalation were getting from owi seems a bit odd to me when you consider how good postscriptum is doing compared to the defunct escalation 1985 but you know whatever they did their own thing this game seems to have roughly started development around 2015 to 2016 and i've never really found any actual gameplay at least is not as far as i could see they do have a bunch of like trailers around but according to one of my subscribers they did have gameplay at one point but i guess it was all deleted along with a bunch of other media sites i was really only able to find screenshots and a remnant of what looked like a video that i could actually play but i can't actually play it i actually did confirm that there was gameplay but according to the person that i talked to the gameplay was relatively bare bones which apparently was surprising to him because the game had been in such a long state of production that you'd think that they would be further along in production than they actually were. The person that I actually talked to gave me quite a bit of insight as to what actually happened. So that's pretty much what we're gonna do is just go through why this game failed. According to the guy that I talked to, the story starts with two boomers who got popular at the right time, got a lot of young and passionate developers to work for them for free. I was able to talk to someone else that was actually close with the project and he does confirm that a lot of the people who were working on it were basically not getting paid. There was maybe like one or two guys that actually received some sort of funding that being the coder and the character artist. According to the guy that I talked to, those were the only two that really got paid, he thinks. But continuing on, the first guy actually showed me a PDF of their business plan. And looking through it, it does seem sound to somebody who would have actually seen it like four years ago. But as someone who's looking at it now, from an outside perspective, it doesn't seem feasible. Which will thank you for sure, but uh, let's take a look at it. Okay, so like I said before, they obviously wanted to make it into a military simulation kind of like squad okay that makes sense but then it says esports we are building custom tools specifically for making escalation 1985 into a watchable game for esports events and live streams okay no Anytime that there's a game that has esports in mind when they're making their game, it almost never works out. Like, I have yet to see a game that has esports in mind when they're making it actually succeed at launch. Like, generally, if there's a game that's, like, really good and you can tell that there's a lot of passion put behind it, then 
it's the players who come up and make their own events and then if the developers actually want to you know do like their own esport and the players like that then yeah they'll do their own esport like a good example of that is company of heroes 2 even after all of this time a lot of people are still playing it it came out like back in 2013 i think it was and look at steam charts there's a lot of people playing it that's because it's a solid game and the developers have their own tournaments but it's mostly community run they just have it on their own channel you know yeah so problem number one you have to have a solid foundation and this game did not have a solid foundation they had esports in mind when they were making it so that was problem number one problem number two can you count how many squad like games actually do esports oh wait not very many like you don't see squad or postscriptum or held let loose putting up money for people to win and whichever team wins you know they get a shit ton of money or you get to take home a trophy like they don't do that like i guess the closest that they get to it is events where they set up these like scenarios like the battle of arnhem which if you guys don't know it's the battle that was featured in the movie a bridge too far and we as players basically reenact the battle but either side can actually win but i mean that's not really an esport that's just an event like there's too much planning there's too much tactics there's too much people like there's 50 people on each team how are you gonna split those funds so an esport doesn't even make any sense for a game that's like squad so how the hell is it gonna work in escalation 1985 i have no idea but it's in their business plan now as puzzling as that is already check out this next one real-time visualization and vr i was a bit confused with the real-time visualization because i wasn't exactly sure what that meant but from what i understand it's just like simulating what you're supposed to do in real life right like heal yourself hop into a vehicle get to another place you know stuff like that i guess i really wasn't sure like even the link that's right here doesn't exactly explain it but it says here the idea shares aspects with simulation generally which i am to assume that that's what he's trying to go for when he's saying that so okay that part makes sense if it is what i think it is but i could be wrong someone smarter than me needs to tell me because the description doesn't make any sense to me like it's a weird description we will create additional revenue by entering real-time visualization and so-called serious games in the business to business and business to government spaces i.e aerospace and defense automotive transportation energy healthcare retail media and advertising and others i'm not sure i get what that means or what that has to do with products and services but okay but i mean if we're just going on the title alone then simulation is good for a game like escalation 1985 like if they had the simulation that like say escape from tarkov has then i would actually like it a lot the other part that doesn't make sense to me is vr if it is vr the kind of vr that i'm thinking of like i could be completely wrong here so let me know but i feel like vr would be a stretch because i would imagine that it would be really hard to actually have a vr game in a big tactical game like squad i'm not saying that it's impossible but that would certainly take a lot of work trying to make a big tactical game with a lot of mechanics and also have vr playing at the same time with keyboard and mouse it just seems like a lot for an indie game studio to do i mean it's not impossible because you know games like phasmophobia for instance has it so that you can play on a pc and also in vr but that's like a small scale game you know that's not a squad held up loose or postscriptum so yeah VR just unless you have like a significant amount of funds and really talented people there's just no way so basically the rest of this business plan is just them wanting to make millions without actually having a solid plan of how to go about doing that in a way it kind of seems like they bit off more than they could chew like this for instance we are slating to release in 2018 and as you can tell that didn't happen based on comparable titles we expect to sell at least 500,000 copies of escalation 1985 with the revenue of us being 20 million we will maintain a skeleton crew to maintain and update the game and keep sales running for at least one year post release funny enough i was actually talking to one of the community managers for postscriptum and they said that they sold well over 400,000 copies and i believe that actually put him in the 11 million dollar range so that's nowhere near the projected amount of money that they were talking about so i think their math was off to be honest but even then they never you know release the game so yeah okay so let's go ahead and talk about their crowdfunding campaign i was in their discord before it got deleted and i noticed that there was like four or five different like crowdfunding websites
websites. Like, they had Patreon, their own website, Indiegogo. Like, they had a bunch of different crowdfunding sites up and running, and I've never really seen that from any other, like, game studio. Like, generally, they just do, like, one crowdfunding site and just promote that one. But for some reason, this game had, like, multiple sites. And from what I understand, it really wasn't that successful. And also, I want to let you guys know that a lot of these pages were already deleted. So it's mostly using the Wayback Machine to check these out. So yeah, let's get into it. When you take a look at the crowdfunding page, it's a little ridiculous. So the first one is $10 and you get your name in the credits. That's already a lot of money in my opinion, but I mean, I guess I could shell out 10 bucks. So let's move on to the next one. It hops up to $40. You get a copy of it. Wait, could you not get a copy with... Wait, you couldn't get a copy with $10? Then why support it? So hold on a second. You'll get $10 to just get your name put in the credits, but you won't receive the game? Because here it says a copy of Excalation, but I don't see a copy up here. Oh boy. For the 40 bucks, all the stuff that's here doesn't seem like it's really worth that 40, but uh, okay. Then it goes up to $50. It's basically the same as the 40. The only difference is in-game wooden furniture for Denmark. Wow, a whole extra $10 just for furniture. Okay. Then it goes up to $70. You get to play in the alpha and beta testing with the developers and like two new guns and two new knives okay i don't think that's worth it but uh then it jumps up to 80 bucks a couple of weapons here and what looks like a drum mag could also get some sort of mug it jumps up from 80 dollars to 150 and then it goes up to 200 220 240 400 550 800 1000 2000 okay hold on hold on before we go any further this is starting to get a bit ridiculous let's take a look at hell let loose when they did their kickstarter okay the first two that they have is is just five dollars and that is just to donate to the project so already that's a reasonable price for me if i just wanted to donate to the project i could definitely drop a cool five to support this project over 1985. let's look at the next tier here the next tier is 25 dollars for a steam early access key for hell let loose looking back at escalations theirs is at 40 dollars so 25 versus 40 hell let loose wins again and these are both to get access to the game 25 versus 40 i'm gonna take that 25. let's go down again this next tier allows access to the closed alpha and beta at $30 if you want to get into the alpha or beta for escalation you have to pay $70 so 30 versus 70 I'm gonna take that 30 there's no way I'm paying 70 for this so you see how much more reasonable hell it loose is to escalation 1985 because 1985 gets freaking ridiculous see how let loose their tiers stop at a thousand dollars escalation 1985 keeps on going until it it hits $35,000. And what do you get when you pay $35,000? Well, you get the BRDM2, which for those of you that don't know, if any of you have ever played Squad, it's this vehicle. I actually told my French buddy about this when I was playing with him earlier. He said that that's a scam because you can literally buy one of those from anywhere from like $5,000 to $10,000 depending on where you live. And according to the guy that I was talking to, the developers didn't have like a BDRM. That's really hard to say, so I'm just going to call it a scout car on hand. He told me that it was, quote, a phone call away. So would they use a part of that money to actually buy that vehicle and then the rest for the project? Like That doesn't make any sense to me. Like you would take part of the money and blow it on a vehicle vehicle instead of the project that people are trying to get you to make? Whose goofy ass idea was this? And I think the worst part is that this vehicle was apparently a big selling point for some reason. I honestly think that anybody who pays $35,000 for a crowdfunding campaign is either rich or out of their mind. So how much did this crowdfunding actually make? Well, according to the website, only $16,000. I'm not religious, but thank God nobody bought that $35,000. But there were people who did donate to the project and according to them, they never received any of the stuff that was promised in their crowdfunding campaign. This is why I'm always very hesitant to cover crowdfunded games because it's like a 50-50 chance of it actually being something that's real compared to something that's being fake or something that's just not feasible. Now with Escalation 1985, a lot of the goals that are in here just don't make any sense. Like in-game spawn with enemy faction weapons. Like that's a tier? Like I feel like that would just be a part of the 
game. And like I said earlier, the furniture thing, like what the hell? But enough about this mind bending crowdfunding. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. According to one of the guys that I talked to, he said that there was infighting between the coder and I'm assuming the guy who was leading the project. He was apparently getting so berated that he left the project and took the whole code of the game with him. So Escalation 1985 had to start from scratch. I was actually able to get a hold of one of the contracts that were actually given to their employees. And the guy that gave it to me said that he wasn't a lawyer, but quote, it has the legal clout of a Xbox moderator message. He was actually able to find a website that had the exact same template of this contract. It's from a website called docontract.com. And if you look at the top of it, it says this generator is not legal advice and is not written by attorneys. So these contracts are shaky at best. Big yikes. And if that wasn't bad enough, the two owners had a legal fight between each other over who owns this franchise. So the focus was more on that than actually developing the game. This is why I asked earlier if updates were coming out at all, because I was actually looking through their announcements when their Discord was up. By the way, they deleted it like the other day as of the recording of this video, but I really didn't see too many updates. Like I was just seeing like the mods posting about other random stuff. And apparently one of the community members actually made one of their own games and published it under Icebreaker Interactive. I actually asked one of the dudes that was close to the developers if he was still under those guys. And apparently he broke off the contract before the game went defunct. So good for him. This was about the time when these guys decided to post a bunch of donation sites so that people could donate to the project. But from what I understand, this is where it seems like they actually started scamming people. I heard that there was a dude that donated like a thousand dollars and they never saw his money again. I mean, I don't think that it was that successful, but I'm not entirely sure. The two guys that I have for sources weren't on the project for that long. And it doesn't seem like to me that the Patreon and Indiegogo and all that stuff was actually up for too long. But I still think it's pretty fucked up that they took a lot of money and shut it down like after a year and basically did nothing. Like you'll just see like a gradual disappearance of all the sites that they existed on. And like I said before, the Discord disappeared the other day, but I still have some footage of it. But I guess it really doesn't matter now. I think the last thing that I want to say is that these guys kept dropping dates as to when the game is actually going to release. Like I've seen early 2018, early 2019, summer of 2020, and that obviously didn't happen. Somehow they actually got to deal with RTX, which is odd. But yeah, that's pretty much all I really got to say about this. So yeah, this was a game that was extremely over ambitious with developers who wanted to make millions without actually having a concrete plan. They were able to raise 16,000 and it seems as if they just squandered it. I've seen games raise about 10,000 and actually have a complete game. Vanguard Normandy 1944 was a good example of that when they raised about 10k and they actually made a pretty decent game. Sure, it's pretty dead now, but at least it actually had a game when it came out, you know? Can't really say too much about Escalation 1985 though. Well, that is the story of that as far as I know it. What are your thoughts? Do you think that this game could have done better? Did you think that these guys were incompetent or did you actually think that this was going to be a project that could have actually succeeded? Let me know. I know that a lot of people moved on to projects like 83 and after conflict, there's definitely a lot of remnants from the Escalation 1985 group. But yeah, if you enjoyed the fact that I covered these types of games and tell their stories, then why don't you go ahead and like the video, share the video and comment down below. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell. You never know, you might find something that you like on the channel. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon, just send two bucks a month. That's all I really need. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye. Wait, hold on. They made a full on article saying how good these binoculars look? Seriously? Why?